Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, I've got Bertram's M38 engine block on the Blockmaster here. And I took a little time this morning to get it set up perfect. Uh, as you can see, we're grabbing it by the crankshaft center line there. And we've got this machine surface perfectly 90 degrees to the table and the cutter is just about ready to get going I've got it clamped down I use the jacks to get it perfectly how I want it on the table and we'll see what it takes to clean this guy up I uh, remember or I don't, I don't know if I showed it but the, the head was quite warped and uh, I had to get that straightened out but that's now perfectly flat We'll get this guy going and um, get this perfectly flat and then we can get it bored and stuff. And then right after this guy comes off here, I've got this F head uh, ready to go on. This is already, oh, I think it's 40 and it's way out of whack. I'm hoping to get it in 60. I might have to go 80 on this one. I'm not sure. Uh, this engine... Uh, will be for sale when I'm done with it and so if anybody's interested let me know um, a lot of times when I build them there's one under the thing here a lot of times when I build them complete with carburetor protronics um, a clutch a bell housing a starter an alternator stuff like that uh, guys say they're too expensive so anybody's looking for um, just a long block let me know and let's take a look see what else is happening here here is this the Chinese block and I was able to get a crank ground up uh, perfectly and put in there so the crank is in there and uh, you know the valve guides are in and the valve job's done and everything um, <clears throat> so that one's coming along and here is the Americar engine and this has uh, every now and again I come across new old stock cranks and I did buy one a while ago and was waiting for a project for it so new old stock crank in this uh, Willys Americar engine so this one's coming along pretty nice and I've got the um, this this is the engine that was going to go in a snowblower Jeep. It's got the Rockford clutch on it and stuff still in the bag. We'll talk more about that one later. But uh, let's get busy on Bertram. Okay, we're just going to take a light skim off here. See where we're at. See if the block is uh, a little weird or not. Like I say, it is set up from the crank center line. We know we want it to be parallel with the crank center line and it's perfect right angle to the table so let's just see what this first cut gets us and uh, we'll get this guy back into uh, perfect flatness uh, on center with the uh, crank center line so it's going to take a while I got on a slow speed I'll show you what the first pass looks like when we get through the other side okay guys not cleaning up too bad we almost made it all the way across over here. You could just see a tiny little bit right there. And a tiny little fleck of light right there. And this is what the block looked like basically from a factory uh, decking. Now I know I'm set up perfectly. I know I'm perfect on the crankshaft center line. And uh, you know when they were making thousands and thousands of these. Uh, they got close, but um, we can get much closer today when we're being careful and rebuilding these properly. So uh, I'm going to drop down, probably take another two thou, see if that reaches all the way across. And if not, we'll just keep tickling it. Uh, I'm not going to rush this. We want a nice, uh, good quality cut like we're getting here. So uh, we'll set up for another cut. Okay, here goes another two thou, and 
does not look like we're reaching all the way to the other side. Well, no big deal. We'll just make another pass after this. We'll see what it, how it cleans up. I imagine it's going to clean up all in here. But um, we want to get it perfectly flat. So if it takes three or if it takes four or even if it takes five, we're going to get it perfectly flat with light cuts. Okay guys, we're gaining on it. We got all the way across right here. And we're just about across right here. We got across all the way over there. And we got a little bit to go here. And like I say, that's what that's what the factory put out and that's what, you know, 50 or 60 years of use has turned this block into. So, once it goes full clean up, right now we have four thousandths off this. Uh, I'm hoping to get it in six or seven, and uh, that won't be too terrible. So we are uncovering all these plugged up holes, and I'm opening them up as we go. Uh, there was a lot of these were plugged, no, no coolant flow, but uh, we'll get everything cleaned up, and uh, we'll take another pass and see where that gets us. Looks and sounds good. There goes another two foul. And it looks like we're just stretching out to the end. Uh, if we get it through the middle, we'll be in good shape. And uh, if this one cleans it up, that'll be a 6,000 cleanup. But uh, let's see where it goes when it's finished. Okay, Bertram, there it is. Perfectly flat. And it took 6,000 to clean everything up. We reached all the way over to the other side and this is going to go up on the SIP machine now and we're going to set up and see what we're going to need to bore this guy to. So it's coming along. Okay guys, managed to get the F head up on a block master. Got that guy decked perfectly. Uh, I did some careful measuring on this one and um, I'm hoping it's 40 right now at the bottom of the hole. Uh, it's seven thousandths larger in this direction, the way the piston wears it. Uh, so uh, I don't know if it's going to clean up at 60. And if I can't get it at 60, I'm going to have to go to 80 with this guy. Uh, now this is this is the the case I get quite a bit. Um, this was a running engine, and uh, you know people. Uh, the people that had it were saying, oh, it doesn't, it's got no power, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't go up hills real good, this and that. And they're like, oh, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want the F-head anymore, I want to put a Chevy V8 in there or something like that. You know, when, a, when an engine is worn out but it's running, um, people sometimes, you know, they have very low opinions of the L and the F-head. But when they're running good and they're rebuilt properly, uh, they do have just a little bit of zip into them. So this will, like I say, it was running and not running very well. Uh, the slop in there is amazing. Pistons were probably slapping. Uh, but we'll get that back to either 60 or 80 over and uh, make this a good running F-head. And uh, this will be a good Jeep, uh, engine for somebody's Jeep. Okay, guys, got Bertram's block up on the SIP. And we're getting ready to... Uh, get our center on the bore and start the boring uh, this block is standard but at the top we are 3 inch 132 uh, at the top of the cylinders you know this distance here so that only gives me a tiny bit to clean that up at uh, 10 over which would be 3 135 so uh, 10 over is going to be a long shot because yeah, the cylinders aren't in great shape, but um, should be able to get it in 20. Uh, we'll see when we send the, uh, the boring bar through there. Uh, we'll make sure we clean everything up. And, uh, you know, sometimes it surprises you. Sometimes you think you can clean up in a little bit and you wind up going many sizes over. But uh, I'm all jigged up and it is 
uh, grabbed by the center line as you can see and I'm gonna get the uh, the guides are in this one I, I pressed the guides in this one and before I moved it over here I'm gonna get the F head off the block master get the guides in that one uh, get that one over to the uh, the press so I can get the guides in and um, just like a production line here we'll uh, we'll get boring and uh, honing and stuff on a bunch of engines at one time so won't be long Bertram and we'll start boring yours that'll probably be another video but uh, you're ready to go okay guys I know this video is kind of all over the place but um, a lot to cover uh, the guys that are uh, uh, regular subscribers to the channel might recognize this motor this was going in the snowblower Jeep it was going to run a hydraulic pump for the snowblower and that didn't work out uh, I, I just couldn't couldn't get it figured out hydraulically and I didn't want to go down a rabbit hole and have it not work uh, that is a good running motor I built the flywheel and the bell housing and adapted the Rockford clutch to it and I felt like I was going to, uh, I don't know, just kind of throw that in the ocean because I didn't have a use for it. But I've decided now to turn this into the power plant for a log splitter that I'm building. So, you've probably never heard of a 75 horsepower F-head powered log splitter. But um, I've been thinking about doing one for a bunch of years. And um, the commercial machines... I've been studying those for a while. Uh, there's a local guy that's got a real fast and nice commercial machine. Uh, but you know, they're anywhere from you know eighteen to thirty or forty thousand dollars for a commercial log splitter. And I've taken ideas from just about all of them and I'm gonna build my own. This is gonna be the power plant. I'll adapt the pump there. Uh, I do have a massive cylinder on the way uh, I have a beam ready to go but um, if anybody has any good ideas for log splitters I'm, I'm open to it because um, you know there's a lot of features I'm trying to build in here uh, a log lift and um, you know an adjustable wedge I don't know I, I see a lot of 12 way wedges now uh, I don't have real good wood ever, you know, I don't have like wood processor wood. Um, so, you know, I got some crazy wood. So maybe, uh, you know, because I don't have the 8 and 10 inch perfect wood, maybe some of those big 4 foot oak rounds that I'm dealing with now, a uh, 12 way wedge would do me right. But I'm not sure. Uh, this is roughly going to be, just from my f initial calculations, roughly going to be uh, between 60 and 70 tons of uh, cylinder pressure. Uh, so, anybody have any good ideas? Be happy to chat with you. Otherwise, you'll see it from time to time. Uh, probably not going to show too much of it, but um, you'll see it when it's finished. I just got to get a better handle on. Let's see if we can see it from here. Here's the woodshed almost filled up uh, I still got probably about 10 cord to go and just with a, a small splitter that I built a while ago it's just not doing the job and uh, you know going to step into something a little bit bigger so like I don't have enough to do but uh, I'm going to get this splitter built so for sure I have it for next season um, kind of struggling through this season by myself but um, I'm getting there okay guys probably gonna end this video here um, you can see the bench is still full of stuff uh, that's for the F head I'm building I finished up that T84 and transfer case a bunch of guys have been asking me if I had T84s for sale uh, this one was probably the best one I ever had uh, didn't really need anything uh, bearings and blocking rings and counter counter gear bushing stuff like that, but um, Remarkable shape took a lot of work to get everything cleaned up, but uh, same thing on the transfer case gears were good all new emergency brake stuff and I've got a uh, PTO I'm rebuilding there 
and uh, that T84, like I say, I was trying to keep them in stock for people, but um, when I get $200 offers for a completely rebuilt T84 and um, Dana 18, uh, it just makes me not want to um, sell anything anymore. But anyway, uh, we're going to end this one here. I'll continue on with the rebuilds and stuff, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. So thanks for watching. See you next time.